Uh, what does that tell you? Uh, when the MAS chose to be preemptive, they don't really move a lot, of course, twice a year, but it seems that they are taking the more proactive approach here. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that definitely was was a surprise. I, I you know, looking at all the data and, and um, you know, clearly inflation is, is the topic of the day. I might be a little controversial here, a little bit boring, but at East Spring, our view is that inflation pretty much remains transitory, that we will see big surges like we're witnessing today. And that's been going on, you know, on and off all year, really. But our medium term inflation expectations remain pretty well anchored. So we're not too concerned about inflation globally. Uh, within China in particular, you know, the, P the PPI numbers continue to, to, to look strong. Exports have been strong. But generally speaking, we haven't seen inflation pass through to consumers. So that, that's not so worrying. What we are really watching is really the, the supply chain, um, particularly semiconductor supply chain, um, which, you know, shortages are, are very real. They're known. We're looking at lead times that are well above anything we, we've seen in, in, in the past. So um, with, with the, those shortages, with the power outages in China, for example, those are the types of things that we're monitoring more closely in the near term. Right. And, and, you know, one of your points and one of your conviction calls, we'll bring it up since you brought it up anyway, uh, you know, uh, the shortage and, and supply chain issue, TSMC is out with earnings later today. That's one of your top conviction calls, semis in general. They, they've been sold off quite substantially, I should note, these last couple of months. Do you think it's a good entry point right now for semis? Yeah, I mean, that that's an area where, where we've been overweight at East Spring. We've been um, very closely monitoring the, the tech supply chain. And, and I think just with, with everything you know, digitalization that's going on in, in the world, you know, semiconductors are a key component of pretty much everything in our lives. So it, it's, it, it feels like a good place to be right now, given all the volatility in the market. Right. So what seems relative, I wouldn't say certain, nothing is really certain in life, really. But it, what seems probable these next 12 months is the Fed starts tapering before the end of the year. And now markets are pricing a possible hike in about 14 months. So this next say 14 months, Sarah, for you, where do you want to be in equity markets? What is that sort what are those conditions going to look like? Yeah, so our our quality spring is is overweight equity still. We've we've pulled that back a little bit. So we've we've moderated our stance, but but generally speaking, we're overweight equities. We still like the US equity market. We still see very good growth and recovery potential in that market. Uh, within Asia, we, we still like China. It feels like, you know, the, the world is deciding, do we need to be in China or don't we need to be in China? At, at East Spring, China and Asia are bread and butter. You know, we think the question should be, right. what do we need to own in China? So that's been, um, you know, we've been really doubling down with all of the uh, common prosperity and, and the new regulations in China to really make sure that we own the best businesses that are, you know, in the, in the right sectors to benefit from from all the regulation in China. So, um, you know, that I would say those are our, our top convictions within equities. Let's let's unpack that call on, on China that you guys have, because you think essentially that valuations are very attractive at this point. So I think start things very simple. Are you talking about offshore or, or onshore equities? Um, we're both. I mean, we, we, co we cover both areas. I mean, obviously, the uh, offshore market has has really sold off the most. So um, from a bargain standpoint, that's probably the, the, the most attractive place to look. But again, the, the domestic A share market tends to have a, a sort of a different universe to choose from. So, um, you know, generally speaking, I mean, the area that's probably, as we know, been been hammered the most is, is the real estate space. So that's where we've been pretty, pretty active going for the quality names. We think the risk of default, the Evergrande saga is, is very well priced in at these points. And, and you know, there are some very, very good developer stocks that um, that, that we'd like to own over the long term. So we've been we have been active in that space. Okay. Now, I guess as far as you know, that comment you had on valuations is concerned, I mean, who knows really where regulation goes, whether that's the Evergrande or the property story or whether that's a tech story. Uh, roughly speaking, do you think that there's enough buffer there looking at valuations and also that uncertainty uh, that bridges that gap for you? I mean, is it a very good time to go along right now? Yeah, I, I think it is. I mean, I think that we've seen such a strong correction in markets. I mean, if you look at, at the at the 
uh, eight share China market, you know, it's it's down double digits, and then you've got a, a market like like India that's up forty percent. So you know, I think that there's a, a great opportunity for bargain hunting in in China. Um, there's the the common prosperity regulations and and sort of um, framework that's that's been introduced. It's, it's definitely pointing us towards different directions and looking at areas like like energy and and uh, tech self reliance and and so forth that we think will be beneficiaries of the regulations. But um, largely across the board, we're we're seeing that that China looks at, looks attractive and has been indiscriminately sold off. Well, I mean, you, you, you know this. Valuations in and of themselves are not catalysts to begin with. I mean, we can keep going lower, but what would you think the catalyst would be? Because both markets have basically gone nowhere. Yeah, I, I think they've gone nowhere. You're, you're right. In fact, they've gone down um, from, from where we were last year. So I think that does make an investors uncomfortable. But typically, that's right. that's the best time to buy. Um, you know, valuations mm -hmm. could go longer. I'm not saying this is going to, you know, Chinese stocks are going to re-rate overnight. That's certainly not our thesis, but we do think that the the companies that we invest in make products that people want to buy and and will buy and have cutting edge technology and are are playing by all the rules. I mean, if you look at China exports have have been surging. Um, you can look at at the uh, the inclusion of of China into MSCI indices, for example, there's a lot of sort of positive points that people are overlooking with regards to the China market because the sentiment has become so negative. And, and typically that's, that's a good time to buy.